This is Rabbi Yitzhak David Smith, and continuing in Parshas Breshis, we see that a fascinating exchange between Kain Vehevel, the two brothers that were the only two children at the time, and Hashem is involved in this conversation. What does it really mean, and what can we learn from it? So we see over here that this is in Paragadalad in the fourth chapter that the uh, Adam and Chava. Um, have two children. One is Cain and one is Hevel. And Hevel was a shepherd and Cain was a, f- a farmer, a cropper. And after they did their shepherding and cropping, they brought offerings to God Almighty. And Cain brought from the, f- the fruits of the land and he brought an offering to God. And Hevel brought also from his firstborn flocks and from their fats and he uh, brought this offering and it says that God turned to Hevel and his offering. So to Cain and his offering, God did not turn. And then it says something fascinating. It says, Cain perceived this disparate treatment. He felt that God was showing favoritism to Hevel. And therefore, he became very agitated, and his face fell. He actually had, he fell into a depression as a result of this experience. Now, what's fascinating over here is that at this time in the world, there were only really four people. And God Almighty was giving each one of them his full loving attention, which he does to every human being, even when there's 8 billion or 80 billion or 800 billion human beings, as he will and and continues to do so. And yet Cain felt a sudden lack of God's attention. And I want to suggest this. What really happened is that he had an insecure thought that he thought that there was not enough love to go around, that because Hashem was paying attention to Hevel at that moment in time, that therefore he was lacking. And that sense of insecurity, what's led him into a, a state of, by ruminating on that and by thinking about it more and more and more, it led him into a state of depression. Now we see that it was really just in his thinking that Cain imagined that God Almighty was not with him. Because in fact, we see in the very next verse, in the very next Pasuk, God Almighty is directly speaking to Cain. So there was no separation between him and God Almighty. God was right there with him the entire time and he was talking to him. Incredible. So it must be that the, that, that this that Cain felt he was separate from God and that God didn't have enough love or time for him was just really an insecure thought because it wasn't reality. The reality was that God was right there with him and God was actually offering him um, advice directly. So God says to him, why, why are you so agitated? Why are you, fall, why are you becoming depressed? God Almighty says to him, that if you are want to choose to see things and to, and to focus on the secure thoughts, the positive thoughts, then everything is going to go well. But if not, then when a person gets into insecure thought, that is where sin is, this getting off track is crouching and it's always trying to capture you And then you have the choice to be able to rule over it. How do you have the choice to rule over this um, attempt to knock you down and pull you down? Because you have the choice whether you want to go with that thinking or not. What Hashem was really saying to him was, why are you getting us so upset? Why are you getting depressed? This is really your choice whether you want to pay attention to this thought or not pay attention to this thought. If you're going to pay attention to this thought, then God forbid you are going to be dragged down by it and it will end off leading to your own downfall. Whereas if you don't pay attention to it, 
you will end off having all good things. So this was personal direct guidance from God Almighty to Cain, letting him know that what he was experiencing, his feeling of depression, was a result of taking an insecure thought seriously. And all he had to do was to ignore that insecure thought and let it go and just move on to another thought and things would be fine. But that was, and the reason this is, this is told to us and it's taught to us in the Chumash is because we need to know this is the story of our lives. That Cain did not take God's advice. He didn't take his advice. He Next Pasuk says, Vayim Kain El Hevel Ochiv he gets into a discussion with him and he starts now having a heated discussion with him. And Cain got himself so worked up in this discussion and this, then it became an argument with Hevel that he ended up killing him. That was the only way he could deal with his insecure thought because he thought Cain could not grasp what Hashem was telling him. Hashem was telling him a gift. The gift was that the reason you're feeling bad is not because of kind, it's only because of your insecure thought. Kind is not the problem, it's just your insecure thought. And Kain didn't listen to him, didn't listen to Hashem, and he took his insecure thought seriously, and he thought that Hevel was the source of his insecure thought, and therefore he thought the only way he could calm himself, the only way he could get back his sense of normalcy and contentment was if he eradicated the source of his discomfort and since he thought his discomfort was coming from Cain, he had to kill him. And that's what he did. Now, that teaches us a great lesson. Hashem just spoke to us and said to us, because it's really the story of all of us, Hashem is telling us, don't go down that way. You don't have to go that way. You could take the, the, the path of the secure thought. And you don't have to go that way. So what happens? And then Hashem says to him, now Cain was was uh, embarrassed over this. You know what happens when a person goes after insecure thoughts? They're, they don't. They, it's hard to talk to God, and it's hard to face the reality, and that leads to even more insecure thoughts, which is not necessary to get into. A person could just let let them go and realize they made a mistake. So then Hashem says to him, but one second, what have you done? The, the blood of your brother is screaming to me from the earth. Don't you see what's happened? You are now cursed from the earth because you have gone after this choice of taking this insecure thought seriously and building on it and building on it and building on it, and ruminating, ruminating, ruminating. So not only were you depressed, but then you tried to cure your depression by killing your brother. So then, after Shem tells Cain the consequences of what's going to happen and how the, even life will be harder and he's going to be constantly nov and nod, he's going to be constantly wandering. That's the, that's the state of insecurity. His insecurity was going to increase. He asked with Tamiya, Rashi says, he asked with great wonderment, what do you mean that my, my sin is too great for you to carry, that I have to be so punished? And the, the, what, what Cain is really saying to Hashem, Cain is begging Hashem, don't you realize, Hashem, you're, you know that I did it innocently. You know exactly how you created me. You know the test I faced. You know that I did what I did because of the thoughts that I was taking seriously. And therefore, aren't you, you Hashem, are, 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 you're the one that created this whole system. You're the one that created us like that. And you told me, Hashem, that I have the ability to choose. Ba'ata timshul boy. I have the ability to choose and to make a choice to go with the secure thought and not with the insecure thought. And you know as well as I do that that's not what I chose and that's a test that every human being has every second of the day. So then he's asking for mercy from the Abishter and, and that is his, 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 his harata over what he did is recognizing that he did not take this opportunity this opportunity that he had to let go of that thought that Hashem was not there and not loving him. And we see how inaccurate his thinking was because Hashem was loving him. Hashem was there at every moment in time. Hashem was with him at every moment in time. Hashem was talking to him. Hashem was guiding him. That's happening to all of us. Hashem is with us every moment in time. Hashem is talking to us. Hashem is guiding us. Hashem says that the noiseless chokhmah, the, the noiseless chokhmah are coming, coming down and we constantly have a bas is telling us to 
connect with Hashem and Hashem's wisdom is constantly flowing into us. This is what's happening every instant in time. So Hashem is always with us. He's always talking to us. If we would just let go of the chatter of all our personal thinking and just listen to Hashem's voice, then we'd have all the goodness, all the brachas in a revealed way that Hashem is gifting us. It's available to every single one of us in the midst of Hashem. We should learn from this, the incredible power of listening to Hashem's voice and letting go of the things that are bothering us, letting go of the things that are causing us anxiety, letting go of the things that are causing us depression. Those things are not causing us depression, it's the thoughts that are causing us the anxiety and the depression. And we don't have to hold on to them, we can let them go on their merry way, and then we can really be merry, because we'll be filled with the beautiful thoughts, the secure thoughts that Hashem wants us to be thinking about all the time, namely that He's taking care of us, He's providing for us, that we will have everything we need, we've always had everything we need, we do have everything we need, and we will, in every aspect of our, life, of our lives, whether it's both time and love and money and everything and nachas from children and, and health and we will have this revealed with the reality of creation, the absolute security that Hashem is taking care of is what's going to be revealed and absolutely revealed in every corner of the world with the coming of Mashiach Tzidkenu should be right now.